Big Boy's Big Neighborhood. Girl. It is definitely going down, man. We're going to get into it once again. This is Real People with Real Stories. And today's yeah. episode, we got Jason, the EMT. Jason, welcome to the neighborhood, man. Welcome. Yeah, thank you. Uh, all righty. Now, as an EMT, do they trip off of you guys having conversations? I probably shouldn't ask that because I, I probably should wait till I, till I get the whole interview out the way and, and, and then ask you, man. How long does a respond? First off, how long have you been at EMT? Uh, about four years. About four years. How did you get into it? Uh, I got out the military. Mm-hmm. And Thank you for your service, bro. Thank, Thank you. you. And it was like one of the few things that I could do. Right. That I felt like I can fit back into like the military mindset and wear the uniform and save lives. I heard that. Now, how long? How long? Like, if I call. How long does a response take? Uh, you're supposed to get there within eight minutes and 59 seconds. Wow. Why y'all don't just say nine minutes? Nine mm. minutes sound too long? No, but there's there's this scientist that came out um, from New York, and he said, you know, response times is eight minutes, 59 seconds, uh, especially in L.A. County because they mm. feel like that's uh, the amount of time to get the patient loaded and transported to still save a life. Wow. So eight minutes... 59 seconds how, how do you feel when you see people when you're trying to get to an emergency and response time is really about eight minutes and 59 mm-hmm. seconds right and you see people that's still trying to like float in traffic and, and not get out of the way do you feel like we care less when it's not our emergency you know what it's no no it's the same thing you, it's still somebody's uh, uh loved ones so. right I mean, but you see when people kind of floating in front of you, yeah. you're like, come on, man. Yeah, what are you doing? Do you drive or are you passenger? Uh, we switch off. Okay, okay. So each person that's an EMT, both of y'all gotta, both of y'all gotta drive. Yeah. All right. Have you ever turned on your siren for other reasons to like get somewhere? Just don't, 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 don't answer just to that. Go eat lunch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like pull up. You don't need to valet uh, that. I'm pretty sure. Now I'm known for doing phone taps and prank calls, but I would never, even in my do my career, people always mm-hmm. say, "Man, you should call 911." I'm like, "Are you crazy?" You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, that's serious. What happens when you get a prank call or like a, a false alarm? Uh, nine times out of ten, mm-hmm. it gets filtered out. Okay. So, you know, they But listen. people still do that, huh? They do it. Mhm. That's Damn. crazy. There's um there's certain times people will just call for chest pain mm-hmm. and to you it's like, "Oh, you know, cardiac arrest." Yeah. But it's just like indigestion or right. they need to take some Pepto-Bismol or something. There was recently yes, a kid serious. that called 911 for McDonald's. Oh man. And they said the the officer ended up taking him McDonald's. But you don't want to promote people calling 911 no. for just certain things what's what's one of the crazy are like are you really calling 911 for this do those make it to you or just to dispatch we get them like I mean, what uh we get cuts and you show up on scene and like a laceration ends up being like a paper cut wow like oh. somebody opened up the mail like ah Jesus yeah. well, to them they're lacerated so, yeah yeah I mean, <laughs> they're kind of correct but it's not the laceration. Now. Do you always in your head have the worst case scenario as an EMT? Like when you hear a call, are you in your head? Are you thinking you're about to see the worst? Is that it how just you depends on what the call is. Mm. And, uh, you know, every day is a new day. So, yeah, mm-hmm. you got to kind of because you never know what going. you're going to see that day. It's not like you get like a schedule and it's like, oh, well, tomorrow we got a well, cardiac arrest. I see yeah. that somebody broke their ankle. So <laughs> you don't know what it is. Nope. Now, what what about your family? Because you work. You What's your shift? You I work nights. So at night you gotta see something. You gotta see crazy. Oh, crazy, crazy. So do you know about how many calls you get a day? Um, you know what? It's for the company or, or like, it, like, like, what's your average yeah. of your response that that you would do? For me, it'd be anywhere between nine to fourteen. Nine to fourteen. Is there one false alarm that that stands out to you? Uh, yeah, we get uh actually get calls where it's like a body on the freeway. And you got a call where somebody said there's a body on the freeway? We get those a lot. Wow. Well, sometimes there are bodies on the freeway. Though, but it so ends up being homeless people sleeping. Oh. oh. I can see that. So somebody say, yeah. hey, there's a body on the freeway. And people are called thinking that somebody either dead or passed out or something like that. And you guys respond to it. It's just a homeless guy sleeping. I heard Camping that. Camping out. Right. It's like, why are you waking me? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, like, man, every time, like, I can't believe this. Uh, do people ever follow up with you after an emergency? There are people that do follow up. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't particularly had one, but they do. Um, like, I uh, had a couple of my guys, crew members of mine, uh, give birth oh. on the side of the freeway. She was going to go oh get some goodness. ice cream, and her husband didn't know what to do. And they gave birth, and um, uh, they birthed the baby. 
he transported the baby where it had to go. And then I know that that particular family kept reaching out. That's dope. And you can tell that you're a military guy because there is no stolen valor with you. Mm -mm. Because I would have told that story like it was my own. (laughs) (laughs) I get that. It wasn't wasn't me. Jason, I would have really been like, yeah, you know, I delivered a baby. And you know what I'm saying? They called. Uh, You know, matter of fact, the baby is now named Big Boy. I tapped him so he can start crying. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, now, do, do you have kids? I do. What What's some of the calls that, you know, because how, do you turn your emotions on? Do you turn your emotions uh, off? Like, what's what's a bad call? Obviously, it's kids. Uh, yeah. Invol- anything involving kids. Kids choking, you know, full arrest to a kid. Kid actually swallowed Drano. Mm. Oh, oh, my God. I, I don't understand how the parents let that happen, but. What what on. about any fatalities? Like oh, that happens a lot too. Oh, uh, I mean, how do you deal with that as just 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 as a human being? Like how, you know what I'm saying? Because I know it's it's got to affect you. Some people can say, "Oh, it's just my job," but how, how do you deal with fatalities or someone not making it? To be honest with you, big when I was in the military, you seen it? Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen the worst. Right. Mm. So. Is there is there a part? Is there a certain part of the year where you see the most calls? Summertime. When Summertime. It's yeah, it's hot, it's we get more. Yeah. We get more daylight. The mm-hmm. the the sun is out longer. We we we're out there doing a lot. GSWs, gunshots, everything. Damn, oh GSWs, gunshot wounds. Mm-hmm. Wow. Let me ask you: when, How hard is it when you know that someone's not going to make it? Do you ever play the scenario of what it's going to be like to like their family or anything? Because because even when I saw Nipsey Hustle. I, as an EMT, they probably had to know, like, man, he probably may not make it. You know what I'm saying? Do Do you see where there's times when you not, you feel like, man, this, we're doing everything we can, but this person probably may not make it? Yeah. And you still got to just do what you got to do. Yeah. You still got to, you know, get chest compressions and set up everything like you normally would. All right. You got to do your best. What is it like at the station, Jace? Um. It's like a second home. Mm-hmm. So yeah. there's certain times you work 24-hour shifts. They have Damn. showers. They have beds. Mm-hmm. They have kitchen, washer, dryer. So you there. Live there. Do, do y'all play pranks on each other? or? Yeah, that happens a lot. I heard that. <laughs> yeah. They get you? Uh, sometimes. But <laughs> actually, I know people that, that use the line that, oh, I'm working at 24 just to get away from their significant other. Yeah, see, I was wondering. You know oh, what I'm saying? Wow. Like, like, baby, I got I to gotta uh, pull not 24. Really, not really be at station. And, uh, uh, can you lie for me? If, you, know. <gasps> you never had a girl that called up with like a fake 911 emergency to see if her guy was there? Like, oh, oh, oh. I've had that. Hey, is, oh, is Jimmy man. there? Oh, okay. Oh, I knew wow. he wasn't going. So you have dudes that say, I got to pull a 24? Yeah. That's crazy. Are yeah, you in a relationship? I am. Oh, have you ever had to pull a 24? Yep. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. That bad weekend, you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, it's work. It's yeah, work. yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's <laughs> yeah, a real 24. So what do you do outside of being an EMT? Um, uh, help set up events. Um, mm-hmm. I help, uh, you know, be an assistant for certain artists. Yeah, because you came in up. with my, my guy Elijah Banks, and yeah. he was like, "Oh, you know, Jason, a celebrity promoter." And then when we started talking, we were like, "Oh man, we got to get him on real uh-huh. people with, like, you know, right. with real yeah. stories." So, EMT. so what does Jason, the celebrity promoter, mean? Um, you know what? Be honest with you. Uh, like I said, I'm I help out. I'm assistant to certain uh, musicians, mm-hmm. and you know, just try to be there for him and consultant. You know, I heard that. Need something. Well, man, thank you for coming in and hanging out with us, man. We always try to give you guys real people with real stories. And when when we just start kind of talking off air, I was like, man, we got to throw him in and make today's episode be about EMTs. You got something, huh, Ade? Yes, I do have one question, Jason. And and tell me if this is true or not. I don't think it's true, but I took off the donor off of my driver's license because they said that allegedly when that's like, say, if they find your body, that the EMTs aren't going to try to save you because... They want to give the organs to other people that need them. You know, like what? if they feel like you're close to dying, they're gonna let you die. Nah, no, I know true. it sounds crazy, but not true. Not true. No, no. Okay, yeah. thank you. No, I'll right. put, put that, put that back D back on, on there. Put that D back <laughs> on. Yeah, yeah, he said put it back on there. Put it back on the donors. I heard that, man. Real people wow. with real stories, man. Jason, the EMT, was our episode today. Jason, once again, thank you for thank coming you, into the neighborhood, man. Big boys' Big neighborhood. Boy.